the world is a very different place and it'll everyone will say nobody saw it coming but it's clearly been brewing now for many years and it's like every single day you can just see this catastrophe inching toward the abyss you know it's we're at the zero line max kaiser believes we are on the brink of an economic collapse that has been brewing steadily for several years now he warns that we might just be a few short months away from witnessing a disaster play out in markets the deteriorating state of various nations' fiat currencies signifies that we are indeed steering into precarious territories. Moreover, soaring inflation rates stand as a testimony to the growing instability in these systems as it erodes away people's qualities of life. Kaiser draws attention to the consequences of this crisis, impacting individuals' capacity to secure essential basic goods such as housing, food and energy. Looking ahead, Kaiser foresees a shift toward the Bitcoin stand-in, hastened by a series of bank collapses. He contends that a considerable number of banks are currently insolvent, kept afloat by questionable accounting practices that will soon be unmasked as we brace ourselves for an increase in banking values in the upcoming months. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where he will unveil his market predictions for the end of 2023 and explores what Bitcoin's pivotal role will be in influencing cryptocurrency markets and global financial landscapes. Also guys, I have just launched a daily 5 minute crypto newsletter. I was so sick of seeing people charge hundreds to thousands of dollars per month for on-chain crypto data and breakdowns. So to give out as much value to you as possible, I am sending out a 5 minute daily newsletter which will cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data and any breaking news that you need to know all in a nutshell. And my promise to you is it will be completely free forever. Click the first link in my description, enter your email to join over 5,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. If you don't like it, I will personally send you one whole dollar so you literally have nothing to lose. Now here's Max Kaiser on the impending collapse. Uh, you know, it's a global fiat money game and you see different countries, their fiat money regimes are collapsing in real time, right? Argentina, you know, these two countries like this or Lebanon recently had a complete collapse or central mm -hmm. bank collapse. And inflation is definitely an indication that your fiat money regime is in dire straits and inflation is breaking out in big way. It's not going to return to where it was before this latest inflation break. Uh, the inflation and the collapse of fiat money is here now. People are feeling it right now. And the quality of life all over the world is being impacted by it. And it's being impacted in the US. You know, people can't buy a home. People can't afford food. Price of uh, oil and energy is now starting to ramp back up again. So it's playing out right now. And there's nothing that can be done to stop this inflation. The economy is completely out of control, right? So the, even the interest on the debt in the U.S. is now over a trillion dollars. So I think it's the biggest line item on the budget, bigger than the military. So there's, the, you know, the, what we were told for decades was, oh, you know, um, trickle down economics or what have you. You know, we're, they were going to grow the economy and those, the increased tax revenues, we're going to pay down our debt. That that was the theory for years, you know, that they're going to uh, stimulate aggregate demand and it's going to cause GDP growth, which will increase tax revenues and we're going to pay down our debt. Well, that never, ever, ever happened and predictably never happened. It was just about printing more money and a lot of malinvestment, that is to say, thieving going on and the capital disappearing. Trillions of dollars just going into a global black hole controlled by the big four accounting firms, this floating casino that never pays taxes, which is now over $30 trillion in big, right? So there is no coming back. There's always only two possible pathways. Either you, you enter into a fatal type of hyperinflation or you're just going to default across the board and you go into a deflationary depression. So it's, it's a depression in either way. Way. It's either an inflationary depression like you see in like a Zimbabwe or it's a deflationary depression like you had in the 1930s. But either way, quality of life is deteriorating and it's doing so in the U.S., in a big way. And so there's no, nobody's coming forward with anything, any solutions because it's past having a solution. And meanwhile, there are now three or four candidates for president and other political offices that are talking about Bitcoin, right? So RFK Jr. talks about Bitcoin. Ron DeSantis talks about Bitcoin. Cynthia Lummis has also been talking about Bitcoin. So people, the, the political class is beginning to see uh, Bitcoin as part of the solution going forward. And uh, 
as you start to get into more of a Bitcoin frame of mind, you know, this is, this will be a transition from the fiat money world to a Bitcoin standard. And it will be driven, not, I don't see it taking decades, you know, because it'll be the result of another colossal wave of bank failures, which is baked into the cake, really. The, the banks are insolvent. They're held together with the counting chicanery. There's nothing there. The central banks are completely devoid of any assets whatsoever. They're leveraged worse than Enron. I think the Federal Reserve is leveraged 90 to 1 or something like that. It's completely the Bank of Japan, which is really the linchpin central bank in the world. If you want to know, really, and you want to follow global central bank kind of scene, you would follow the Bank of Japan because they've always been the funding currency for many decades now where other central banks would borrow from the Bank of Japan and invest in higher yielding currencies in what's called the carry trade to try to extract another 20 or 30 basis points. The Bank of Japan has always been the cheapest source of funds and they because they've been tapping into their country's pension funds, which were overfunded by billions of dollars for many years. And they've kind of run out of that. They've run out of that money and they're going bankrupt. And now Japan, it looks like it's entering into default and that will drag everybody else down with it. And so people, if you turn on CNBC or you turn on financial news or you read the Financial Times or the Wall Street Journal, it should be front page news that what's happening in Japan, but it's it's not. So it'll be a big shock. You know, it'll be a, one day it'll be like, oh, Japan just went bankrupt. The world is a very different place and it'll everyone will say nobody saw it coming. But it's clearly been brewing now for many years. And it's like every single day you can just see this catastrophe inching toward the abyss. You know, it's we're at the zero line. Well, it was inevitable, of course, that Wall Street would get into Bitcoin. You know, my background is mostly in Wall Street. So my introduction of Bitcoin, the way I saw Bitcoin from the beginning, was from that perspective. So I wasn't coming to it necessarily from the technological front, and I wasn't coming it to it necessarily from the philosophical angle. You know, I, mostly I saw it, and my first question back in 2011 was, is this an asset class? Because if it is an asset class, if it's a new asset class, then the potential is enormous because there's $100 trillion, $200 trillion worth of investable assets around the world, and they're very competitive with each other. The hedge fund industry, the private equity industry, they're extraordinarily competitive and they're all looking to, you know, get the edge on, on the other guy in the industry. And if Bitcoin enters that arena as an asset class and you have hedge funds starting to outperform based on their Bitcoin position, you know, you're going to have this huge groundswell of capital moving into Bitcoin. And I think that's the stage we're at now. So when a BlackRock or some of these other big funds, Paul Tudor Jones was, I think, probably the first hedge fund to mention yeah. Bitcoin in a big way. And so when it becomes a recognized as an asset class. And if you listen to Larry Fink and these people in on Wall Street, they, you know, the, the phrase that they use will be, well, you know, we see it as an asset class. So that's like a green light that says, you know, we, once it's categorized as an asset class, you know, we have nothing to do except position ourselves in this asset class. Either we're going to be a small position or a big position, but we cannot ignore it. We cannot not have a position. And so any, even 1% of that multi hundred trillion dollar fund, funds available, you know, moves the needle on Bitcoin and moves it up considerably. So if you get into the five to 10% range and, you know, then you start to see it really race ahead to these very, very seven figure type predictions that people have been making, including myself for years, because it is an asset class. Now on the flip side, you know, you have the what, what we saw in the gold market, which is that the ability to control price discovery and manipulate prices is real uh, through the derivatives market. So the price of gold has been lagging inflation for 20 years because the governments around the world don't like gold making their fiat money look bad. So they make it easy for huge funds to manipulate the price of gold and to scalp and to continuously skim profits off gold, which is what they do almost every day. You can watch it and see it is pretty clear. And they are um, very good at keeping the price of gold and silver down. You know, there are something like for every ounce of silver, there's probably 50 ounces worth of derivatives floating in the various exchanges around the world that are used to keep the price of silver down because government, again, governments don't want gold to race ahead and to draw capital out of their fiat money scam into gold. Uh, with Bitcoin, we have the ability to pull our private keys, which is 
not really available in gold. Technically, people can take delivery of gold on these exchanges, but there's never been an organized attempt to do so. We tried to do it a few years ago with Crash JP Morgan Buy Silver because after the 2008 financial crisis, when JP Morgan ended up buying Bear Stern effectively for nothing, they inherited uh, this huge multi million short silver position that Bear Stearns was managing at the behest, presumably, of their, you know, the government. You know, the government likes to stay stay involved. And so I did some calculations and it became clear that if this short position wasn't covered and the price of silver got to, you know, sixty or seventy dollars an ounce, it would bankrupt JP Morgan. So we started this crash JP Morgan buy silver campaign and we got the price from 15 up to 50, which was the old, you know, of the Hunt brothers. The Hunt brothers yeah. got it. Right, so the 80s. In the 80s, the fill, the end of the $50 range, they were cornering silver. So uh, we got it back up to the old Hunt Brothers $50 level. And then the feds, of course, came in and they changed the laws overnight to make it possible for these banks to uh, have and carry a much greater short position in silver. So they they, did, they printed up a lot of paper silver derivative and they um, they stopped the run, the, the run on their bank. And uh, the price went back to 15 or so. So we've seen that it is possible to force capitulation in the silver market, you know, but at the end of the day, because the ability to pull private keys is not like it is with Bitcoin. I don't think it ever it will ever succeed. Whereas with Bitcoin, you can pull your private keys, and and that is what the late great I shouldn't say late, but the uh, the former Bitcoin superstar Trace Mayer uh, started a campaign that on January third of every year, people would uh, you know pull their keys off exchanges as a way to maintain integrity and to prevent uh, these derivatives bubbles from building up to excessive price manipulating levels. You know that was uh, you know. No, but just to give a shout out to Trace, I mean, before, you know, Michael Saylor, everything Michael Saylor says about Bitcoin in terms of an asset class, Trace Mayer said first, you know, starting, you know, he was a buyer of Bitcoin at Definitely. 25 cents, you know, and going back to 2010. But he's, he's another example of somebody who disappeared, uh, one of the OGs who disappeared. Uh, and that's kind of an interesting uh, story as well. So, uh, yeah, you're right that when you have huge money in these markets, they have the ability to to manipulate price. So there's Max Kaiser on the turbulent waves that are on the horizon for the global economy and financial markets. The potential shift to a Bitcoin standard, as outlined by Kaiser, paints a picture of a world bracing for change, where adaption and knowledge could be key to navigating the coming months. Remember, staying informed in this volatile environment is your greatest ally. My daily 5-minute crypto newsletter is here to help you stay a step ahead with expert predictions, detailed on-chain data breakdowns, and the breaking news all delivered directly to your inbox. If you haven't already, click the first link in the description to sign up and join a community of over 10,000 like-minded individuals aiming to enhance their crypto investment strategies. Anyway guys, hope today's video provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.